Said. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Are you able to uh, share your screen for the presentation? Should you share your screen or should I? Uh, you can do it. I have to uh, do some other settings here, so my screen will keep changing. Let me just check. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Cool. So we'll we'll wait for ten minutes and then start. Yeah.
Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've just like launched a poll where uh, people can give what stage they are in, and uh, so we'll get the results in some time. Meanwhile, uh, thanks again for joining in. So uh, it'd be great that uh, you know the idea is that we have like a product community, people, both PMs and people interested in product. So uh, maybe like you could you know give an idea about your journey and the PM landscape in general. Uh, so let's get started. More, I think more people will join along the way. So it's over to you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jaren, uh, for this opportunity. So that like I wanted to share my product journey with the different aspiring product managers and young product managers out there. So uh, basically, uh, I started my career uh, in 2014. I passed out from IIT Kharagpur. After that, I worked in an oil field service sector company, which was drilling in Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi. There, I spent around one, one and a half years. After that, I co-founded uh, my own startup, which was called Stero, which was an on-demand automobile servicing startup. Then basically, and at, during that point in time, I really started to realize the power of product management, right? So I moved to a company called CureFit and I was in a slash product slash business strategy role over there. I worked there for like only four months over there. And then I got an opportunity to become a product manager at Swiggy. And after Swiggy, I am currently now working at Gojek. So basically, in a sense, I think that has been my journey on the product management curve. But I think in terms of to tell you about something in depth about exactly what type of products that I have worked on. So basically, I started in Swiggy as an API platform product manager. So this was more of a technical product management, which was basically I had to develop an API platform so that uh, companies like McDonald's, Burger King and Domino's, these guys can receive their orders on their own point of sale systems. So that platform I worked in depth. So that was basically the fulfillment part of Swiggy. So that platform I worked a lot for the first five, six months. Then I built products regarding integration, which was basically we integrated Domino's end to end on Swiggy. And Domino's is perhaps the only restaurant on Swiggy which is self delivery. So like you don't have a Swiggy delivery executive who gives you the order. If you order from Domino's on Swiggy, it is Domino's own fleet. So it had its own fair share of challenges and there basically I had good enough understanding of what, how basically the, the fulfillment landscape of products exactly works. Then I worked a couple of months on basically something called a restaurant owners app which we launched so which was an app for restaurant man uh, owners where they can see the data and run their own promotions uh, lastly the role that i was in swiggy was called uh, restaurant growth i hope most of you would have heard about uh, the swiggy discounting coupon swiggy it so that was pretty much me and my team worked on that particular initiative and there is a lot of things there are a lot of things that goes in the background which enables consumers to use that swiggy it coupon so in that i worked extensively like for one year and that was like one of the biggest i mean uh, discounting stories between swiggy and zomato that we had to fight so it was like a pinpoint fighting that was going on between swiggy and zomato so lots of consumer problems we solved lots of merchant problem which is restaurants in that case that we solved and that was basically that journey. So after Swiggy, I decided to like, it was after two and a half years at uh, Swiggy, I decided like it was time to move on to another experience. So currently I am working for the past five months as an advertising product manager at Gojek. And I'm, my team is charged to build the advertising platform for Gojek. And just to tell what Gojek as a company is, so Gojek is perhaps a super app if you haven't heard about that in Indonesia. And it's like a combination of Suyi plus Ola plus Paytm on one, plus Book My Show and plus Big Basket on one platform. 
so basically i am looking after their monetization stream so that has pretty much been my journey i mean to get to product management the fight of that and then basically to basically becoming a product manager in like swiggy where we saw a lot of growth and learned a lot from the peers in product management and then now on to ojek uh great asad thanks thanks a lot for that intro about your career journey so uh, so i just uh, check the results so just a second uh almost uh, 35% are students uh, you know a lot of in the community in the product community also we have people who are in their final years like some are in b schools so i think uh, that is 35% uh, 30% of the people are uh zero to three years experience in non product roles 20% are uh zero to three years experience in product roles and like the rest are greater than three ex- three years experience a uh, few of them in product and few of them in non product sure so, so i think jen uh, yeah. i sent a slido uh, poll on basically why people want to become a product manager it would be glad like if you can send that link again Yeah, yeah, people can fill up that. The reason we really wanted to understand the audience. So, as a product manager, it's very important to understand the underlying motives of why you want to become a product manager, and then on the basis of your intention and your deep lying motives, you have everyone has a different path to become a product manager. So that will be really helpful if you guys can fill out that poll on Slido. So, guys, I am uh, sending the Slido uh, link. on chat you can just take a second and like so there are just five options uh based like whatever is your whatever you think is your reason or like motivation to get into product uh just select that and that will help us take this session forward so so basically i think in terms of uh, i'll just tell you about how exactly i got into product management and that's pretty much something that could be taken as a good initiative like people can figure out their own ways of getting into product management but that is pretty much the tougher part of things so if you look at basically so around 2016 and that was the time where i was uh having my own startup but like at that point of time you also need to figure out what are the things that you should be doing over a 5 or a 10 year journey in your career and at that point in time one thing was pretty much clear that product management was becoming one of the biggest uh, roles available there in different sort of companies especially in tech companies where you can have a lot of influence and shape the strategy of the company so there basically i understood for an example like product management becomes something very important and that was the reason why i wanted to move into product management so i think in corporate i was not a part of the pm group uh, but what i used to do because i wanted to be a pm at that point in time first my motivation was there so basically the part of the journey was to work with fellow pms and interact with them and to figure out how do they perform things especially from a product management perspective and it's far more deeper than you will imagine if you were not a product manager so that is something that i started doing a lot interacting with product managers in your organization and if you are want to switch to product management that is something that you should be doing more often so basically i think the next point in time is you have to decide your own set of skills and whether those skills are required all that help you to become a successful pm so that i think as a startup co-founder one of the skill set that i had was high ownership levels and simply because if you can take high level of ownership that means you can do one of those parts of product management pretty well so that was my fundamental move and then there are different set of skills which we'll talk later you need to evolve all those skills to get that particular thing so i think the way it happens so no one would want to take a fresher into product management and that is pretty much clear and it was also very clear at that point in time the demand was still low for product managers but still no one would want to take a fresher and that's a problem right how do you solve that problem the, the 
the solution to that problem is i started to give a lot of mock interviews especially to small startups to at least get a feel of what product management is by interacting with different product managers and then once you give a lot of mock interviews you kind of figure out what is exactly required to get an entry into product management so the second part of it was like networking and you really need to network really really well to get jobs so basically one of my friends was a product manager at swiggy and he contacted me that there is an opening which is kind of a product analyst for slash an apm and here you have to do some technical stuff which is api management so basically there was how i got my chance so based on those interviews and i somehow cracked that interview to become a pm and i started with very down the ladder so again this is very important like if, if you are looking to become a product manager it is much more easier in your early part of your career within the first 3 4 years because it really does, i mean people can take you as a junior product manager that is much more easier but if you are like very into your career it becomes more difficult i'm not saying it's not possible it is definitely possible but as you go into the career it becomes on very difficult to become a product manager as you get more mature into other roles in the industry right great asad so uh, we have quite a few people like almost all of them have filled the slido so sure. let me just share the slido one just give me a second okay let me just see okay so yeah we got 37 responses so i think let's like start from here ki if you basically say ki the first point of this journey starts from the question why like why do you want to become a product manager and i think most of the people i mean uh want pm jobs because it's high ownership levels and it allows you to influence the direction of the company which is one of the most prime reasons as to why people would want to become a product manager and the next part is about like soft skills so you have certain soft skills which we'll talk in depth about later in the uh, presentation will those soft skills help you to move into product management better which is stakeholder management vision product sense and all of this and the third part is basically and the third biggest thing that i can see is uh, okay i think this is 21% so being an expert in one domain so i think making a move you you can't expect like if you are a say a business manager in a pharmaceutical company and then you cannot become a product manager in say a product manager in a ride hailing company so i think when you look at movement from product managers to become a product manager you have to go incremental so if you know pharma your best shot is getting a product management job in a pharma company so it's basically moving incrementality So rather than not moving completely opposite of what you are doing if you go incremental then you have a better chance of becoming a product manager so i think i'll go next part of it okay okay so let's see what are the different sort of so here is kind of a like what are the core skills that you require as a product manager so if you look at the top of the pyramid is communication so basically what and what this blue box is like which is the job role currently which maximum which matches to this particular skill set maximum in maximum value so for example communication so who are the best communicators in the world mostly the marketers because they are communicating to users to design and that is something so basically if you look at communication this is the most important job of a product manager so a product manager needs to understand a complex problem and make it very easy for its for his consumers and also for his internal stakeholders so if you look at so i think 40 or 50% of product management boils down to good communication if you don't have the skill it's very difficult to become a product manager but you need to access whether you have good writing or like skills in which you can simply communicate to people even without talking to them so that is very important uh the other part of it is a certain other pieces of soft skills and there are three one is like high ownership levels so basically a product managers are given certain road maps and certain directions which they have to develop over the course of a year or an half it takes time to develop that and you need very high motivational and ownership levels so that you can keep yourself as well as your team motivated 
so that becomes very important so if you look at if you are a startup co-founder that is something that's very natural because you have run your own startup you have that particular level of detail uh, then the next part of it is stakeholder management so one of the most important another important skill set that you have in terms of soft skills that you need is stakeholder management and this basically becomes a product manager will work with a variety of people engineers designers researchers data analysts and business uh, managers now what is very important is to make sure that all these stakeholders follow you as the like the vision is yours and you need all these people to follow that particular vision and so that they are aligned all the times and this is something that you will learn exclusively if you work in bigger companies like swiggy or for that matter ola or flipkart where you have multiple stakeholders so this is something that you need to figure out that is this and this is one of the most important skills now the last part in the soft skill is not something that is typically there before becoming a product manager it is something that is developed as a product manager which is basically product vision and sense so can you think of the future and can you figure out what type of products need to be built so this is something this is more of an instinct which gets developed as you make more product if you don't have this thing it's still fine the thing is this could be developed when you do your product management in the right ways now if you look at uh, these three and then there are basically five other key stakeholders that you work with which are also skills that you require at some level or the other depending upon the type of so if i talk about these four communication ownership vision and stakeholder management this is required in all product management jobs now the next five is dependent upon the type of product manager you are so let's say i mean you are a data analyst so you need data driven decision making so the pm needs to understand data to be a centric point in making a decision and the second thing is obviously engineering because this is where you spend maximum of your time with the next part becomes design like you will work and depending upon the product this involvement could be high or low and that is something that you need to have basic understanding of and one of the other thing is basically user research also so how to make a product what product to make validating your idea these are things that are done by user research so if you look at user research typically i would say there are specific researchers who work in companies like nielsen who do research for particular surveys these guys are good suited to become product managers if that's a focus area and the other way i would say sales persons are very good researchers because they understand their consumers end to end they know what will sell and especially for a b2b company this becomes very very important of a skill set to have and the last part of it is business strategy so you need to have that particular strategy and you need to understand the overall business this is where mbas and consultants are typically very good so basically if you look at product management it's basically a combination of all these different type of skills and depending upon the job the skills are basically could be increased or decreased depending upon the job right so asad like uh, so we have uh, again like looking at the distribution you know i think uh, it's a little more of people having some experience but in non product roles and then there are students also so like it's a healthy mix of both so one of the common questions like i think like the basics uh, that people get often confused is like what does a pm do like uh, if you can maybe walk through an instance of you know like the whole life cycle of what what really happens when you want to launch a feature or launch a product that will also be great okay sure let's basically let's start with like i can let's start with over here in this road map so for example i think this is something that needs a more detailed conversation but i'll give you a gist of how basically you launch a particular product so the first part of it starts with the heart which is the product vision and sense so the product manager needs to have a vision in terms of basically what he has seen in the market or what he thinks is the right thing or what he has taken as an input from user research okay you need to build a feature x and x could be anything right when you need to build a feature x you have to figure out what is that feature x now the first question then that goes is you do a consumer research 
and consumer research could be of various types you can do a prototype testing so basically it is you make an app a dummy app on uh, an app called proto.io which is a good tool for doing this and then you show it to the consumers and you measure the consumer intent of purchasing that particular product one of the other things that we did at swiggy was we sent out dummy mails to restaurant owners when we were making a discounting product for restaurants and we said would, would you want such a product or not so that's something that you need to access the need of your user figure out his pain point and you need to figure out whether that product is required at that point in time or not then the second part of it is basically you do your metrics for that particular product and you do the estimation so if we were to build a feature x what is going to be the impact on the company because you will only be able to do that if you align your stakeholders and if you tell what is the metric that you are moving so then you do a data driven decision making and you do an estimation first once the estimation is done then basically you figure out what are the key metrics that you will track as a result of that particular product so could be like for example if i am building a new pricing algorithm for ola ola share then basically i will say as a metric that i will increase my revenue from x to y and that is my metric and that is how it my success of my product will be measured out so that is how you make that decision you take that metric once the metric is done then you basically go to something called design whether and not all products require a design so basically if you have to say launch a new grocery product and you have to design the new user onboarding experience so then you need to figure go to the design team and figure out what is the design but this may not be required with every product so once the design is done then basically you write down your product requirement document which exactly tells the engineers what are the things that they need to code for what are the features that needs to be built exact and in those things what are the most important things is to take care of the different different type of edge cases so for example if you were to basically uh, let me give you an example on that uh, okay so for example if you were in swiggy and if you had to build a product on something called prep time which is basically the time a restaurant takes to prepare a food and how would you measure like if the restaurant does not give that particular feature what will happen if he gives that feature then you have to check whether that's the right uh, preparation time given by the restaurant or not these are the things these are edge cases that you will put inside the engineering team so i think most of your time will go with engineers and then you have to work very closely with engineers to develop the product and launch the product now basically the last part of it will come to the communication guys and basically some part of business strategy is how do you launch a product so for example do you want to launch it to all users do you want to launch it for a segment of users so what is going to be your messaging to users who will use this product so all of that comes under this whole gambit and then basically once the product is launched then you keep on measuring the uh, data driven decision making the metrics and see if it is a successful product launch or not i think that is something that we can go much more in detail because each of those particular points require a session in in general if you want to go really in depth into that i think i think that's good for like an overview uh, to you know the product manager's journey while launching a feature or a product uh yeah so i think like that's that's a good starting point for people you know who are who have just started out uh sure i mean uh, so these are basically the skills now what people you know have in mind is like how do i develop these skills so like uh you know like these are essentially these are like a lot of jargon for people who you know who are coming in new so should they like go for a course or is there like a particular way for them to develop these skills if they are currently not in a product role sure i think i'll just take a one step back on that approach so basically to tell like how the journey for a particular product manager or a future right. product manager should be mapped let me just just let me show you yeah so basically if you want to become a product manager you have to first understand basically what are the different type of companies that you can ever apply to so right. basically on like a very this would be like a 80 85% true characterization 
a four different type of product companies that you will work with ever so the one type the first will be basically something like a marketplace so in marketplace something there is a physical transaction which needs to be occupy which needs to accompany the action happening on the app so for example in uber you book a cab the cab comes to your location and you go to your destination so that is a physical trans uh, transaction which is getting completed so these are called marketplace type of companies uh, then the next example would be a small startup which is basically something which is pre series a if you can say and these are small startups and a different set of problems and challenges for these sort of startups these are small startups where you can definitely learn a lot there is the barrier to entry is also very very small it's easy to get into these sort of uh, startups and basically uh, you can learn and execute a lot over there next is basically if you want to be a product manager for a b2b saas company so basically which is something like a zoho zoom for example is also a b2b saas company so this is basically you understand the requirements of a client and you develop a product and you do sales via online channels or basically through your own business development team so that is a b2b saas company and the last is what is truly a consumer product company which i am calling so this could be something like a a game or a social media app in which everything happens on the app so you don't need to there is no physical uh, thing that gets followed everything every action gets completed on the app there is nobody or no one that you will go after the app for example share chat it's a vernacular platform like facebook for vernaculars and ludo king is a game you can play the game on the app and you be done with that so basically i mean just to ask to jaren's question like to understand a little bit deeper as to what sort of skills you generally require and after this i'll come to exactly to your question how do you get into product management what are the courses that you can do uh, so basically if you look at you need to first understand what type of product manager you want to be and if you look at broadly between 70 or 80% of the companies this is going to be the mix of product managers so the first role is basically the growth product manager so think of this product manager as someone who is responsible for getting users acquiring users to the app and also who is responsible for overall growth of the company could be in terms of engagement ratios could be in terms of orders that is something the growth product manager is responsible for a type of products that he is he would be working on would be new user acquisition would be discounting would be out of app engagement just like push notifications for that example i think the next part is a fairly long and this could be further divided into a lot of parts is discovery product managers so these are product managers who work on the consumer experience on the app this could be something like a product manager who is looking after the feed page of facebook he could be looking after catalog in swiggy he could be looking after search products at flipkart and everything to do with in app engagement and in app consumers finding their journey in the app so these are called the discovery product managers and that's one whole big area of product management so the fact is you need to understand what maps to what what your skill set maps to which type of product management and that is where i put all these four parts and the fourth, third is monetization which basically is responsible for unit economics of the com- company and unit economics is your profit and loss statement whether your company is getting profitable or not that is something these product managers look into and the last part is fulfillment product managers these are product managers which are specially in a physical marketplace where they basically allow or enable the physical transaction to get complete so for example there is a delivery team at swiggy which looks after completing the taking the uh, food from the restaurant to the consumer so that is that particular product management and set of features which come into that right so as it like uh, you know uh, so these are different kinds of product roles uh, so like uh, should someone keep these in mind and like prepare separately or do you think like the skills that you talked about are you know like almost common across these different types of product management roles okay so basically what i said so in terms of something that i wanted to share with people is how should you basically uh, i'll come back to your question once i answer like what are the different ways you can become a product manager 
right. and then i will answer this question in detail about how these this everything is connecting right is that all right okay yeah yeah sure sure okay so i think it's so once you understand your skill sets you now know what type of product manager or what type of product management you want to do so let's say the first and this is the biggest movement of product managers i have seen across my career is basically the easiest way to move is to move internally so i mean there is no other easier way to do that especially for a junior role so if you a company already has product managers you have a great chance to move into as a product manager there so i think the way to do that and i have seen like this is from my experience with different people who have moved into this role is you should be a part of what in most companies there is that is called a product development group this consists of business people uh, users this will consist of researchers analysts designers engineers so if you are a part of that group you get to learn a lot about product management because that is something that will be discussed day in day out inside your particular org of which you are part in right so that is something that's the best way to learn from there i think you should work very closely with a product manager if you get a chance and try to learn these skills uh, from him and him or her for that matter and i think that is something that is easily doable and i've seen a lot of people take this route you the, the thing is ki i think if you look from a company's perspective if you are a very high rated performer in your current role then that makes that really solves the problem of your performance right now it is basically a domain switch and the domain switch is pretty easy because you already have 70 80% context of the entire product working with that product group and hence for somebody to give you a break into product management it is pretty easy because if you already been knowing about product management you already know about the company and hence the variability for you is very very less and that could be negotiated if you have good mentorship and then basically <coughs> the time it comes like you should network with product managers in the company and apply for a junior product role once the opening comes into uh, place there is an opening and you apply from that i think the best people that i have seen move is product analyst business analyst and marketing analyst i mean they work closely with product managers and it's definitely the easiest way to become a product manager for sure because the friction is pretty less so i think in your journey to become a product manager you should look at incrementality if you reduce your incrementality of your current job to the pm job that you want you have a very very fair sense of chance to get into a product management role so next is basically now what if if you don't work with a pdg group or you don't have a product manager in your company now the other thing is ki how do you network you can do that by building your own brand which we call like you can use linkedin and tell people about your views because you need to really tell the world about your product views so i think the start to that is you can start writing some blogs about existing products you can write about say a zoom or a swiggy or an uber which most people understand i mean it's very important and that too when you start writing blogs you are exactly giving that time to think about the product and when you get your product getting uh, uh, get it reviewed with a lot of people whom you feel have good knowledge and context into that because that will give you a good sense of momentum as to what you are doing the other thing is it's very important as a young aspiring pm to have a role of a mentor and i had mentors also when i wanted to be a pm so it's very very important when you get mentorship from someone who can exactly guide you to that role so use your and then basically once you have a good mentor and a good network you can use your network to get referrals and use some inputs from your mentor to crack those interviews because ultimately the problem that most people will have is hrs will not uh, give a lot of head into people who don't have a pm background and hence it's very difficult to get a call for a pm job hence your network and your mentor can help so the concept of a mentor is very very important in uh, to have uh okay i think this is a, a small one i think so basically there are some good things that covid has done so earlier product management was tainted as more of a soft skill and which cannot be done remotely so now with covid coming in and everyone working remotely you have a good chance of doing remote product management so if you join a small startup which is say a five six people and even if you say ki i would want to learn for free and you can give do product management there for free maybe you can learn a lot 
I think there's no bigger substitute than actually doing the uh, stuff yourself. So once you do that stuff by joining a small scale startup to learn product management, that is something that is very, very helpful. I think not a lot of people are able to do that, but those who are able to do that have sufficiently very high uh, interview cracking rate. So they can track interviews at a much faster rate because they have exactly worked on product, not the theoretical one. Uh, so the last part is, and this is something most people ask, right? Do you require an MBA to uh, do uh, become a product manager? So I think the uh, answer to this question is pretty easy. See, MBA is required if you want to become a product manager, but especially when you have a tech background. So even get companies that come for placements in MBA colleges, if you have a tech background, that means if you are an engineer or if you are an analyst, and it becomes very easy to become a product manager. So MBAs help in something called business strategy. That is that sense that MBA gives. But if you look at the jargon of product management skills, it is far beyond an income passing than that to become a product manager. So MBA is yes, an important part. Some companies have a policy like Amazon for that matter will only take MBAs as a product manager, but definitely the way I have seen as mature product managers in the industry, I think MBA is not of that, like the top skill to have to become a product manager. So I think, um, Jaren, I think this is something that, uh, I think a small framework that kind of, I feel like you should do as an aspiring PM is basically <clears throat> you should evaluate your current PM skill set basis on those skill sets that are mentioned for a PM you should write yourself like what are the things what are the examples that you have done in improving or uh, in your current skill set and how to improve those skill set then basically the first example is like you may write about yourself but it's better to get it reviewed by a peer and by a mentor as to these are my skills this is what is an expectation for me and then so basically then you need to so you can't product management currently has become a very vast field so you need to narrow down your search and that is where you can show a lot of focus. So if you want to become a monetization product manager and then you are being and you know in depth and you start doing a lot of reading and blogging on basically the future of payments in India then you know a lot of context over there. So when you apply for a payments product manager, your chances are much more higher. So that is something that you should definitely look into. So if you choose the type of company you want to work as a product manager, then you choose the type of role based on your skill set because you can figure out basically you want a discounting product manager or a discovery product manager. And then basically the last part of it is choose the journey. And that is something that you need to do yourself. Like out of these three, four journeys that you have, you have to choose that journey to become a PM. And I think there's no substitute rather than actually writing blogs where you exactly learn about products. You can make your own designs. You can publish it in on LinkedIn and a lot of people have been doing that. So for example, if you wrote a blog on advertising and I get to read that, then maybe I will think if I have to hire a junior PM in my team, maybe I can give you that chance because you have already been writing on that and you have already been knowing that space pretty well. So that is something that is something that you can do to get an entry level PM job. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah. So, uh, so basically let just to summarize. So first, the most important thing is like evaluate your current skill set, like where you lie on that skill set, right? You yeah. I think you can go back to that slide where okay, you map the skill set. Yeah. So, uh, in whatever role you are already in or in your previous experience, you would have had some particular skill set and based on that, like you can, you know, decide like where you fall. So what if, uh, so one, one thing you said is like specific, uh, like companies or, you know, PM roles that you can target, but like, if I want, you know, is the other way like necessarily bad where I keep it open that, you know, I'm, I'm open to different companies and like different types of PM roles. See, it depends upon if you are a specialist in any of this, then it becomes pretty easy to do that. See, I think since the opportunities are scale, Yes, you need to have more options on the table and that is true. You need to have more options on the table. But I think the probability of when you get more options on the table, 
you lose your speciality like if you have done it properly in one particular product and maybe you can use that particular product that you have developed or blog that you have written in your interview okay, okay i learned a lot about this thing and that is something that you can use in your interview as well but i think to get i think it needs to be a mix of both if you get enough opportunities within your network for a particular type of product management role then it's pretty easy to go deep into one aspect and become that but if you think if you want to go for generalistic approach then you can have you need to have high levels of most of these things and then basically it becomes important for the interview right if you are interviewing for a role then you can figure out what is something that i really need to figure out or concentrate more on and then go in depth into that right 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 uh so like uh i think we'll take a few questions i mean unless you have Sure, I think that should be fine. I think we can start on Zoom. Yeah. Or is there so, something on Slido? I'll right? take. I'll pick up questions and I'll I'll give you uh, give it to you. So, one question we have is from Rishabh is that is it better to take an analyst role in a big company or a junior product management role in a small company? To start. See, I think I think it depends upon basically uh, your skill set. So, for example, if you become an an see the. i think the probability for an analyst to become a product manager is not that high unless and until you really perform and you have most of those conducive things but from a junior product manager if you already have have a junior product manager at a particular company it becomes a little easier like you are into that product circle so from that perspective i think it needs to be evaluated on a case to case individual basis but yes if your company that you are going for in a big company which allows a lot of pm if you see a lot of trajectories for example gojek does this perfectly well you have lots of analysts who moves in, who move into product management i have seen over the course of 4 5 months a lot of analysts moving into product management and that is something that becomes important and i think analyst tool i would prefer in terms of if you are looking from a career point of view also i think that analyst tool could be preferred but yes there are cases where the small product management thing also becomes important so i think it's a case to case basis but i think if you go for the risk to reward ratio i think the analyst role will also give you access to a bigger company which is also important at certain points in time and if there the company facilitates internal movement uh, you definitely will have your chance at product management right so another question is like how to learn the technical aspects if you are a non non techie like yeah that are required for product so i think the same question applies for design also because people don't have much of design sure 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 i think that is something that is something so i'll tell you about my experience so when i i did not had any tech background i think the question that suhi asked me was to write an api documentation for developers and give an api integration plan for basically uh, for uh, api document plan for developers so that they can integrate with different apis that was a question that came to me i think you need to understand few basic engineering topics you need to i think in terms of i been mean, few resources that i can say or things that you need to know you need to know how to work on jira let me just ping it on the slack channel as well you need to understand how to work in jira you need to understand something called a high level design and you need to have some basic idea of how api contracts work i think these are the most important thing that you need to really understand from an engineering perspective and i think most companies they don't judge you on your engineering skills they will judge you on how you have collaborated with engineers and that is very very important so maybe one way to overcome this is maybe you can get a hire a software developer i like if people are committed to product management for the long term because this is a rewarding career then basically it becomes important you can say maybe hire a developer and say work with him to make your own app and that is something that you can give him and quote as an example okay i made this own app of mine and here i learned how to do engineering or like i interacted with an engineer so these are lens that if you are really interested in this uh, product management as a career then you can do these type of things and it's worthwhile to do these sort of things because anybody who wants to go into product management from a non product background they have to really take some strong sacrifices that they need to make like my previous boss used to tell me like what is the sacrifice that you are willing to make to become a product manager because it is rewarding in the long term definitely yes 
like he would internally he would also when he, they used to move people he would ask people to take a salary cut because if you really want to do product management then maybe that salary doesn't matter to you at this moment so i think these are sacrifices that you need to do and i think in terms of working with engineers few engineering blocks you need to understand these three four high level things and then the most important thing is can you deal with an engineer or not that is the most important thing right so i mean dealing with the engineer uh it's something that comes on the job right like yeah the way like you said is to probably work with an engineer on a side project or something like that yes and uh, does the same apply for design like uh, in terms of uh, ui ux and like so that is also an important part if you are if you are working on that kind of a product role so how do you de- develop those skills so i think see see design is something that becomes i think yes absolutely in terms of uh, most of the product managers who are new do learn design especially from senior product managers or mentors so i think in even in gojek and swiggy for that matter i think there was a culture of product mentorship within the product org only where mid level uh, product managers will mentor a lot of junior product folks so as to they onboard them into the right frameworks and i think the most important thing is not the design it is the framework of to get into that particular design so if you read about frameworks and if you understand the framework of what consumers need what is cognitive load for that matter what is the jobs to be done concept for a particular user how does a user go to the next step with the minimum possible resistance on design if these are principles or basically frameworks that you need to figure out on design and mostly i think the way it helps is maybe you can redesign few experiences yourself and then maybe write a blog on that and maybe get it reviewed from a designer or a product manager they can give you lots of uh, input to that i think no one i think as a product community what i really believe is i think people who are product managers and who have some experience they should definitely help the community because i feel in india product management has just started i think the peak is way i think still 5 6 years away so i think in terms of when you have that culture where product managers can definitely help young budding uh, product managers to learn those right skills that is something that i really kind of uh, motivate in my own team as to like different product managers having that whole learning culture but i think yes you can get it reviewed make your own design there are things like proto.io there are things like balsamic where you can download that and uh, make your own design i'll just write this proto.io you can use balsamic for design so you can use all these quick things you can say also ki can you redesign the uber experience can you redesign the uber app now you have to just think of all those things and you have you must have a framework the framework is like it depends upon different type of products but have a framework and then you will be able to exactly figure out design so i think that works not just for design like redesigning or thinking about an existing app and why it was built in the first place like that can help you in the whole uh, product thinking uh, also right yeah there is there anything yeah so what i was saying is like redesigning an app or breaking tearing down a product uh, is that a useful thing to do to sort of develop this product thinking so i think in terms of tear down is definitely i think the best way to learn product is to do a case study i think it's not general talks on product management are okay for a start i think when you really need to so for example if we talk about ola pricing like how does ola do that pricing you will for that matter if you understand like how swiggy does its delivery executive assignment and for that matter like how does search work on flipkart so if you go to individual products then you can understand the depth of product management you see when i was not a product manager to me the only concept of product management was when i used to look at the uh, once you place an order on swiggy there is that uh, help center and i used to feel if i can tell okay what are those five best options on the help center that is something that product managers will be doing that is something that i get, need to get to but i think it's far more complicated far more complex i think it really will be helpful if we can have future sessions on basically tier downs of products where you can exactly learn the end depth depth of what are the different things that go into building a product right right 
so yeah so guys like we have one like that at 9 pm so what we'll try to do is like tear down zoom product as uh, you'll also be you can also join us there uh, we'll do that later so uh, again so like another question we have is basically you know like he, he says like he doesn't have a clear idea on jargons like agile uh, etc but he loves leadership uh, and marketing sales and engineering so i think these two questions i think yeah what if i don't have clear idea on product management jargons like but i'm madly love with leadership generally involved myself in diversified domain so i think it makes sense i think agile jargons like agile is like just a term word i think very few people use agile sort of development and even who claim to be using that don't use that pretty much so for example so that's not a problem and maybe even if you don't have a clear idea you can read about that and get that idea because if you know that agile is an important thing then you might get that idea but i think yes if you love if you have the leadership trait if you have multi diversified domain experience you should definitely be doing a lot of product management and that is something a right course for you uh, and that, that is i think the most important thing is you get to do new stuff every day and you will control in terms of the company strategy and you can shape the company's vision i think i'll take one more question here in the software engineering change her role to pm how to identify and to change a domain i think software engineering is perhaps the most easiest way to become a pm frankly speaking anyone who knows about <coughs> product management apart from everyone mentioned apart from the pm is the software engineer so i think he is the one who is building the product he is 70% into the product so i think software engineering becomes very easy to move into a product but i think currently i have not seen software engineers becoming product managers because they still software engineers feel that software engineering is a better field than product management but those who really want to become it's pretty easy for them and even if they don't become they can easily do an mba for a one year and they will easily be accepted into any product company across the globe a software engineer plus an mba is like no one can refute that person from becoming a product manager right and another question we have is how is pm role in b2b it services company do you have an idea about that okay so when you look at it services company and saas services company they are different it services company like wipro i uh, wipro and tcs if i may ask so so there basically what happens right so there is a difference between a customization and a product management earlier in the world what these it services firm used to do that they used to have a client the client need, uh, had a set of requirements and those set of requirements were converted into specifications or features or products right now what that happens is basically so who are the diff two different people involved in there one is the project manager who and one is the business sales manager who does the sales the other is the pro project manager who is responsible for delivery of the product and the third is the engineering manager who runs those prints and delivers that product so these are the three spectrums involved over there and none of them is close to product managers because i think the way product management is different from it services is product management you have to figure out not only for that one client you have to make a product for thousands of clients so that those people can use your product and would not require customization so that is how product management is different especially also on a b2b saas product as well right right so another question is like what are various skill development methods you i think you covered that in the framework but are there any courses that help or is there anything i think else? there are few books i think how to read a, how to become a pm how to crack the pm interview is the cracking book. the pm interview right i think that is quite that's pretty rudimentary but it's it's pretty good also i think uh, design of everyday things you should definitely read if you want to think about designing frameworks so that is a very very good book uh, to read and i think if you really want to think about optimization products and strategies on pricing revenue something a book called monetizing innovation is something pretty good cool. cool so i think these are the three different books that i would say in terms of courses yes quite a few but i haven't checked of recently like which is a good course to do on product management there are quite a few courses in the market i think in coursera i'll just figure that out and let you guys know but i think yes courses are also a good way to do that especially if they have case studies of product management 
so that's a good way to do that but uh, currently for online courses i have to just figure that out right so i think like a lot of people you know have the question that can i become a product manager like they are stuck in that you know like that unsure uncertainty phase so what would you suggest is the first thing they can do to like sort of jump into it because you know people are not sure if they can be a product manager see i think it's fine i think it's fine to have a dilemma no one is sorted especially if you are early in your career and it's fine to consider your options but yes you should not haste into an option to figure out whether product management is a right fit for you i think the one on which i mentioned on the slide to write down your skill set and maybe you guys can ping me as well i can review that for uh, for you like if you write that particular skill set and say these are my skill set and then basically you can figure that out okay that is why i should become a product manager so you need to get convinced from your own skills and things that you want to do in future to become a product manager you should not get convinced because a lot of people want to become a product manager so that is not something i think the, so, so if you look at from that perspective yes i think you just write down your own framework use the skill sets and see whether you make it or not i think the worst part of it if you don't explore product management and you could have been a kick ass product manager but if you are not explored that so you miss out on that opportunity so if you are at that stage of your career 2 3 years and you want to basically decide how your career should look over the course of 5 10 years you should definitely give it a go and even if it requires you to do some work trust me i think in terms of from a career growth perspective and even from your pay scale perspective product management definitely helps you in the longer term see because basically what happens you ultimately you have a skill set right as a product manager you develop a skill set which is very hard to replace and once you have that skill set then basically you have a lot of value in terms of for companies because the way i see it business strategy roles will become redundant in 5 6 years time because in tech companies all of the decisions are mostly increasingly being led by product managers of how the vision and strategy of the company should look like right right so uh, another question we have is like is there any advice for engineering students like final year engineering students and like what are possible paths for them so maybe a direct pm role uh, for mba students is possible but is it possible for engineering students also i think engineering again is like the best i mean ev- among everyone i think google facebook all of them had engineers as product managers i mean google for that matter only takes engineers as product managers so if you don't have engineering experience they don't take product managers and earlier all product managers were engineers only so from that perspective the way i see it so from a perspective from an engineering perspective if you are interested in a product role maybe try to work in a product company on one or two years you will surely get your chance if you want to become a product manager there is no way that you can get stopped and even if you get stopped or not able to make that jump you can easily apply for an mba and become a product manager i think that's pretty easy from an engineering perspective like i tell you i mean my brother he works in a he works as an android developer and he kinds of develops his own three four different types of apps i think he is half a product manager because he started he started thinking about product thinking about design so he already understands a lot of these parts so basically i see from an engineering graduate perspective i think you can make your own apps few own apps and you can do all of that you don't need another developer to build that for you so maybe you can use that as a concept that you can be a good product manager but i have rarely seen engineers becoming that much excited for product management initially in their careers because i think engineers uh, in terms of the way they think that engineering is one level above um, product management so that's what i my interaction with engineers have been so uh, like so when you talk about engineering students they can also be like non computer science students so what about them like so now they have multiple options like uh, they can either go into like the business side or you know the software side so like what By is engineering i was i meant computer science only i'm really sorry right, for that right, right. i meant computer science or electronics or somebody who has coding experience in the college that's very important if you have coding experience in the college that really helps i think other parts to that is see increasingly data science is becoming one of the top notch roles especially in tech companies because as most companies are maturing i think data scientists are going to be something that is going to be of extreme value so if you look at 
I mean, this is something in terms of value for the company. This is what Jeff Bezos used to tell. I mean, the top of the food chain is the data scientist. Next is the engineer. Next is the product managers. Next is the analyst, and next is the business managers. That was what Jeff Bezos used to tell about his Amazon vision of who is at the top of the food chain there. Right, right. So, uh, are there APM programs happening in India? Like, what are possible? And like, can students like directly get in? So, I think this is something that uh, I think uh, earlier. You and like one more thing is like, what does an APM exactly do? Is it like what part of the product manager's responsibility does he take? So basically, what happens usually? So for an APM role, generally people prefer some sort of experience, and that is typically most of the product teams have done. But yes, there are certain companies, and mostly I think Gojek is coming up with an APM program. Mostly it will be launched by next year. So they will have an APM program of steady APMs becoming product managers. That is something that. most big and mature companies will start to do and i think a lot of companies that recruit from colleges they do that uh, so basically in terms of uh, that thing is going to happen from an apm perspective see apm depends upon a company to company as a apm i my stream was independent at swiggy and my impact was say even equal to a pm or an spm even at times so it depends upon the company usually what happens you work under the guidance of a mid level product manager and with that you work very closely with him you are responsible for your own stream or one single product and then you try to go in deep do the debugging do all of that thing for a particular product so as you mature your scope will expand and i think apm is that learning phase where you need to do things to learn right so we have a specific question like does starting a pm career in gaming company uh limit future opportunities or like is absolutely, absolutely not i think if you look at the top of the best product managers i feel is happens is you tend to understand a lot about gaming and gaming is a pure pure product play as compared to a marketplace or a b2b saas company so i think gaming you get to know two things one is engagement which is discovery so you need you will understand how to keep your users engaged you will also understand a lot about growth in gaming and you will also understand monetization because you have different different things to do to monetize the gaming app so i think gaming is one of the best industries to be in and it is something of a very highly pm driven organizations that you have uh, especially in gaming so i think gaming is a great product management field to be and i think it is something that you should not even have a thought as gaming does not hurt your experience it actually will help your experience like at sui i'll tell you I mean, the AVP of Discovery product was an ex-product manager from ES Sports. So that is how, like, if, if just give an example. That's how important gaming as a company is, as a stream is. Right. So we have a question like, what exactly, like, what was your work like as a PM in the initial days or as an APM, and is it different from like what you currently do? Like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think so. It happens. an apm mostly you you are told okay this is a stream that you should work on and as you move up i think the part of product management that comes into life is your product sense and vision so you need to have that vision and then stakeholder management becomes much more important at higher stages because as you move up the ladder so when i was like uh, as an apm i used to work mostly on a project to project basis and not think of an overall platform right as you move into your career you think about overall development opportunity for example i'll give you an an option right i'll give you an example as an advertising pm now i think how to make gojek a 100 million advertising platform in 2 years time and what are the things that i should be doing incrementally to reach that goal but if i were an apm i would have thought ki okay how do i launch a cost per impression model um advertising for our restaurants on go food on gojek So that was would what I would have deeply thought, and that would have been my stream of thought. But now I know that what are the things that I need to do to go to 100 million dollar, figure out business problems, get resources from the company in terms of engineers, have your own team, motivate that team. So that scope keeps on increasing as you uh, go on increasing your career stage. You uh, okay? So you talked about user research. 
where sales experience can be important uh, any other skills where business development and sales experience can help in a pm role i think see i think the most successful people who i have seen are tremendous sales person and even as a pm if you are not a tremendous sales person you have to sell your vision of the product to the ceo you have to sell the vision of the product to the company to the consumers so you need to be a spectacular sales person and that's just something that is a skill that is required to succeed in the long term now when it comes to the kind of skill that is getting asked in terms of business development as a skill i think more of a skill that is required more to do analytical thinking and as a business development manager if you understand your problems of the users because if you go to a b2b sales company or a b2b saas company like freshdesk and if you have been a account manager for a company like which sells software for that matter you understand the consumer pain points you have been relaying these pain points to the product managers right now it becomes much more easier for you to transition like this but see business development also from a software perspective will be much more helpful to go directly into a pm role rather than doing business development for a company like say flipkart so you will that matter it's just relative right so basically like the you know you are already conveying the user problems to product man if you are in a b2b business development role for a software company so that can help you with the product yeah i think that is something that could help and if you take the right steps and sit enough with your product managers and figure out those things see ultimately what happens see if you look at from a hiring manager perspective see the hiring manager who is sitting to hire product uh, managers he will look from a demand and supply gap if he feels he if he doesn't have enough supply of product managers then he will go to those people who may be not relatively very highly experienced in product but if he has high demand already of product managers who already have some sort of experience then he will pick from that so i think anyone who is hiring wants to max minimize his risk and basically if you don't know product and for you to get a product role without doing any of the things that uh, that we discussed it becomes very difficult right why would someone give you that chance because it's a very important role for the company right and like you said because of the increase in supply like you will have to do your maximum to stand out and like yes be there i think uh, we have covered like most of i the think there is one question from praveen i will just take this one okay i think as an incoming pm see i think that's very important so this is the time of your life where you should figure out like how to work with engineers make good relationships with them and have a good working cadence with them and also you need to also do a lot of mentorship to so try to talk to senior pms in your own company so that you get to learn a lot try to learn their frameworks and the most important thing is take the ownership at this point in time take your problem statement execute that end to end and make sure that you are the most responsible person for that problem statement so for example even if there is a bug in your product you should be held accountable for that and you should hold yourself accountable for that and make sure that everything is resolved so that is very very important as a apm you need to exhibit that energy that burst of energy that's what apms are for in the company to have that young burst of energy so you should influence that you should spend time with engineers and you should get a lot of mentorship with senior people in your company because i think product management at times also becomes your experience because if you launch more pro- and experience is just not years it is launching more products if you have launched more products then it gives you a lot of experience in terms of taking launching the next after product so i think that is something that you should enjoy this time but figure out your own frameworks also right right i think we have covered all the questions here any masters or course to do for uh, pm interviews or like for the pm role see i think i the best i would suggest is to i think there are few questionnaires on the net how to crack a pm interview where you will get a lot of posts see the problem with this sort of an approach happens is you need some depth so basically when you speak from experience there is no substitute to that and however amount of what you learned it becomes very difficult to do that if you are not speaking from your own experience so i think um, 
if you can do things like blogging or writing product or making product yourself you will see from a question point of view it's a very superficial you will never have the heart of a product management a uh, product manager in terms of to answer those questions so hence i think better to say do tear downs of product for that matter so if you do tear downs of your products you will understand how to do product management and in terms of courses i think there are a few i will figure that out and i'll i have a list i don't remember right now maybe i'll send this on the ifnik up group as well. but do you do you uh, recommend like courses because you know people do get stuck in that course mentality also because like they just watch a lot of courses and you know a lot of time goes by there see i think practice becomes more important and that is where if you can write a blog or start a blog or maybe make a app yourself uh, i think that is much more important right rather than doing a course for that matter but i think yes a uh, course is a substitute to mentorship if you are not getting access to mentorship we need to do courses so a course which has some some element of feedback and like mentorship that that is important right rather than just videos that you are watching yeah i think you need to see people need to understand your skill as well right and they need to give you inputs on your thought process when i used to prepare for a pm i used to call my pm friends and ask them about how i should prepare for that and you should talk to three four different people and get general idea from them right so we'll just take a last question that's just come up and then wrap so our de- as demands for pms are less when compared to engineers and what do you think about the supply and demand for like the pm role okay so basically uh, so what happens there is something called a engineering to a pm ratio so for every typically companies have five engineers and one pm and that is the that is the typical golden ratio so definitely it is less than engineers and will definitely be less than engineers for the foreseeable future now when you think the job security i think product management is starting to ebb in terms of it's on a rising peak i think there will be a time where peak will be hit but i think it's still 5 6 years away right and even more than that what is happening is most of the non tech companies are becoming tech so for example if you look at hul or for example itc for that matter even companies like lg and samsung they will slowly samsung is like still has product managers it's lg and all so slowly and slowly a lot of these companies will move towards technical process and technical product managers who will rewrite their whole processes from being physical things to digital things that is where a lot of demand is going to crop up because if the online uh, transaction pe- online penetration is increasing in india online sales will also increase right so pms will have demand from a job security point of view i think as long as there is a demand for a pm it should be fine i think it should be a fine from a 5 to 10 years uh, perspective but what i say if the world no longer tomorrow if needs engineers then they will also never require product managers so i think from that perspective product managers are there unless and until up till you have demand for engineers once you don't have demand for engineers there is no demand for product managers as well that is something that's going to happen but i think product managers will have a little bit more age when edge when it comes to cutting edge data sciences and automations which will also take a lot of engineering jobs away product manager still has a lot of science and an art to defining the product which still is little far away from a machine to be done so basically that is still a little bit better on in the next 10 years down the line so i think from a 10 years perspective it's safe i don't know after 10 years there may be a new trend right great i think we'll we'll wrap it up and uh, so like i said uh, we have another session like we'll try to do a tear down of a product at 9 o'clock it's at the same link so hope to see uh, some of you there also i will just take a screenshot and give the screenshot post it on the group so that at least people have the answers sure sure so sure guys like uh, so uh so we do have a group i think most of you came from there the product community so if you haven't joined like you can join that we have a lot of pms and you know other people who want to be pms so we'll do such sessions there and yeah let us know you know how uh, like your feedback and you know how to basically improve this and how these sessions can help you learn more or what else you want uh, to help in your pm journey 
sure i think let's make that uh, let's do a lot of discussion on the fling up channel where we should do a lot of peer down and let's build a community where like people can ask question and there could be mentors who can especially help them right right great uh, so see you see you guys at 9 hopefully thank you guys thanks sir thanks jerin